And welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys and welcome here today to a Barcelona transfer news roundup. We're going to be going over the latest news from the January transfer window and today we are going to be discussing the imminent future of Muni El Haddadi which certainly lies away from Barcelona. We're also going to be discussing Felipe Coutinho and the rumours that continue to follow the Brazilian this January. We're also going to be talking about a shock Barcelona bid that's been reported for Willian this transfer window and finally we are going to have some very positive news on the potential arrival. You got it. It's Frankie de Jong. All of that and some more. It's coming right up. Let's do this. Well, let's start first of all with Munir al Haddadi, and Munir's future is becoming more and more clear by the day. And what I mean by that is basically he's edging closer and closer to leaving Barcelona for good. He's not going to go out on loan. There's no more of that. He is going to be leaving Barcelona, and it is going to be permanent because, as we know, he's entered now into the final few months of his contract. He is now free to agree a move elsewhere, which would then take place for absolutely nothing come the summer transfer window. And the club and Valverde have been made fully aware of this. Munir wants to go. He's got no intention of signing a new deal. He has been given the opportunity to sign one. One has been offered to him, but he's rejected that and he is looking to leave the club. And it's because of that that Munir will no longer be involved in any squad list for the remainder of the season if he stays at Barcelona. He wasn't involved in any capacity in the Copa del Rey against Levante and he could actually depart for that reason in January should the right offer arrive. And Marcus say that both Atletico Madrid and Sevilla are both heavily interested in the 23-year-old forward and that report says that basically Barcelona are looking for just something, a little bit of money just to sort of see that transfer over the line and just so we don't leave for nothing come the summer transfer window. Three million euros is the reported fee that we're looking for and I'd imagine really that those types of clubs, they'd be more than happy to pay just a few million to have Munir a few months earlier, give him more time to gel and make an impact even this season and we're going to have to wait and see if any of them make an offer in the coming days and weeks of January, which suits our club. And interestingly enough, just to follow up on that Munir sort of story, if Munir was to leave in the January transfer window, we would then be completely without any backup forward in the first team to Luis Suarez, which is basically where Sport have decided to pounce this morning. They have come out with a big story and a big surprise. They've been linking us with yet again a surprise move for out-of-favour Chelsea striker Alvaro Morata. This time, though, it would be a six-month loan deal until the end of the season just to see us over the line and just to give us that backup option. Whether or not that is true, whether or not we even want to consider something like that, make of that what you will. But for now, on to another man with transfer rumours circulating around him this month, and it is none other than Felipe Coutinho, who has found himself recently out of favour under Ernesto Valverde, and is probably right now in the most difficult spell of his Barcelona career since he joined in that 160 million euro deal at exactly this time of year. It was one year ago now that we signed Coutinho, we were all incredibly excited, I was in Barcelona when he actually signed for the club, and there was a really good feeling around the arrival of Coutinho, but even when he came in, we were still wondering where does he fit? What kind of position is he going to play in? And a year later, we're still waiting to find out what sort of permanent role he's going to hold in the club. But despite those rumours that you will have heard over the past few days coming out of the media, linking him to a move to Manchester United, ESPN say there is absolutely no truth in these rumours and that no bid from any club has arrived for Felipe Coutinho this month. And this actually comes from Marcelo Bechler himself, the well-renowned journalist who originally broke the Neymar to PSG rumours and he is certainly well in the know when it comes to Brazilian players. He would know if any offer had been made for Coutinho and nothing at all is happening right now. And I can certainly believe that. I can certainly believe that no bid has arrived and even if one did arrive I would strongly expect the club and the player to reject those kind of advances simply because the club paid an astronomical sum of money to bring Coutinho here. They put a lot of faith in him a lot of trust in him and Coutinho himself has dreamt of playing here. He desperately wants to succeed here. He desperately wants wants to come to Barcelona and make the impact that he really wanted to and I'm sure that he will. It's up to himself to make that impact when he's given the chance and more importantly than that though, it's up to Valverde to find that place for him. Find that consistent place in the team where he can make his own, where he can battle for it and fight for it and earn it and then consistently have opportunities in that kind of role. We have to give our record signing here consistent chances in the team to really find his rhythm because as I've said many times before, if we can find a proper 
position that Coutinho can grow into, make his own. I'm absolutely sure that we'll see the best of him. And that's what we all want to see from what is here. Clearly a very quality player. But now we move on to incomings, and we'll start first of all with the dubious yet slightly worrying rumour that's going around at the moment, and then we'll move on to something, of course, a lot more positive. But first of all, we have to discuss, we simply have to discuss, Willian. Yes, Willian again. According to sources in the UK right now, mainly surrounding the Telegraph and Sky Sports, who in their own right are relatively good sources when it comes to English clubs, they say that Barcelona have renewed their interest in Willian, following on from the summit where we were very interested interested, Chelsea rejected countless offers from us. Apparently we're ready to do that all over again and we are prepared to offer a cash plus player deal to sign the Brazilian forward. And they say that the player that Barcelona are offering in exchange is Malcolm and that combined with the cash it would make that kind of deal worth around 50 million euros. All of which is absolutely staggering to me given the fact that William himself has endured this season a really poor season and many of their supporters actually believe that William Willian shouldn't even be anywhere near their first 11. He shouldn't be in the team. That's what they think is really poor. His end product hasn't been good this season. Clearly low on confidence, not playing well. And don't forget, 30 years old now. But the most surprising thing about all this is, according to the same reports circulating now, Chelsea have rejected this kind of offer. And whilst this reported offer may not even be true, I do doubt that. I really do doubt that because I think Willian, not really what we need. Having said that, the board do have have this sort of tendency to go down the weird route, you know, the kind of Paulinho route, chasing a player who we don't really need, we don't really think will suit Barcelona, but chasing them for big money. That has happened in the past. But at the same time, it does still worry me. Maybe we could actually go back with an even bigger offer for Willian. I hope that it doesn't come to that. I hope this isn't true. Hopefully we can just cast this one aside, let this all die down, and Willian will not be coming to Barcelona, not for cash, and not for cash plus Malcolm. But finally, last but not least, you've got this far, guys. Congratulations. I come bearing some more positive news when it comes to Frankie de Jong. And that comes, of course, in a player that we really want. Because there have been a number of reports over the past few days. I want to give you the full picture on this one. Because clearly, we're all very excited. First and foremost, it's very important to note, nothing is a done deal. Nothing has been completed. Nothing has been signed. So don't get too ahead of ourselves here. Don't get too beside ourselves with excitement. But at the same time time, things are looking very, very, very good. In the local media in Barcelona, they're extremely confident. They always are when it comes to these kind of signings. But I just think, I've always believed that De Jong's first choice has been Barcelona. He's wanted to play here, he's watched our players, he's idolised our legends, and right now, he wants to be in that Barcelona shirt alongside the likes of Lionel Messi. And then it was always up to us to make him a suitable offer and fulfil his personal needs. And according to the local media, again in Barcelona, that has been done. De Jong has agreed a contract, he's agreed his wages, he wants to sign and he's very happy with the terms. A five-year deal has been mentioned in the Spanish media and the next big obstacle has always been Ajax and the transfer fee. That has always been the stumbling block because clearly we're talking here about a lot of money. But given our signing of young centre-back Todibo, of which I'll have a full video coming up very, very soon guys on Todibo and a full profile everything that you can expect from our new defender who'll be signing on a free transfer in the coming transfer window in the summer. But because of our signing of Todibo, our pursuit of De Ligt may or may not be going ahead now this summer. A lot of money would have been spent on De Ligt, a lot of money would be spent on De Jong, but at the same time, both of them would be astronomical. Meaning that maybe if we don't go for De Ligt, there is a good chance the majority of our budget will be spent on somebody like Frankie De Jong, which helps with that particular obstacle with regard to the transfer fee. But again, we bring in now Marcelo Bechler into the equation. He's reporting that whilst De Jong is very much on track, he may well have a agree personal terms, there is something holding him back right now, and just one more elephant in the room, and that himself is Adrian Rabiot, simply because Bechler says that De Jong is very concerned that if Barcelona signed Rabiot as well as him in the summer, then his playing time could be affected, and that's something that he really wants to avoid. So really for me, it's as clear as it ever has been now that Barcelona have to choose one or the other. Do they want Frankie De Jong, or do they want Adrian Rabiot? For me, and I know many of you as well. That decision is a very simple one. And he is to hoping that Barcelona and the board 
make the right choice. And so that's all from today's news roundup, guys. Some good, some bad, and some worrying signs in the transfer window. But as always, guys, take everything with a pinch of salt. Wait for more reports. Wait for more substance. Nothing is confirmed. Nothing is even happening until you can see it in black and white. Leave your thoughts on the transfer window and everything we discussed today in the video. I'll see you soon, of course, with more content. But until then, as always, Vesca El Barca. Oh, <laughs>